But but the liberals have told me I like crime's gonna happen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean it's just it is gonna happen. Oh let's Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to show you how people are living on other universities because the gliders on um the Michigan State University, they're saying you shouldn't have to live like this. It's it's is it's, you know what I mean life shouldn't be like this on a campus. All right, Bria, thank you very much for that. And now to another crime alert. The University of Memphis is on high alert after three people were robbed on campus at gunpoint overnight. WREG's Quimitra Wilborn spoke to students who say they're beginning to question their own safety. Students living on the University of Memphis campus are on high alert after they were notified of two robberies that happened on campus overnight. If you want to rob somebody so bad, get a job. Officials say the first robbery happened. And it's that type of mentality that keeps people losing. These That's fuckers the don't want a job. Work. No, but, but these fuckers don't want to. It's not a job or rob you. It's not like, oh, I filled out 15 applications last month and I can't get a job. So let me go rob you. No, robbing you is option A. B, C, D, E, F, and G. <laughs> they make yeah. it seem like these guys are out there fucking going to job fairs and shit when they're not robbing people. Yeah, they don't want the obligation of reporting to somebody in the structure of a job. Shit, is, that shit irks the fuck out of being somebody who's hung around guys that rob people and shit like that. Nobody's fucking, it's, there's nothing to do with any of that stupid shit about a fucking job giving somebody a fucking job that shit ain't got sh that shit ain't even in the equation that shit is not in the equation it's not part of the equation it's like they put that shit in there like it's the it's a constant when it's not even a variable in the equation a fucking job the fuck are you talking about they get jobs after they do about 30 years in prison Oh, yeah, they'll do a prison detail, yeah. ...fight of two robberies that happened on campus overnight. If you want to rob somebody so bad, get a job. Officials say the first robbery happened at 925 on Central near Deloke Street. A man and woman were walking when they were approached by two men with guns wearing ski masks. Campus police say the suspects took the victim's stuff and then ran to a red sedan. But these thieves wasted no time finding their next target. Campus police say the suspects pulled up to a third victim. One of the suspects got out of the vehicle and demanded all of the victim's personal belongings. Thankfully, she and the other two victims were not harmed. The second incident happened just one minute later in the 3600 block of Norriswood, right in front of this student dormitory. This student lives in the dorm and says she usually feels safe walking on campus at night, but now she's not so sure. Two people got jumped. It wasn't just one. You'd like to think number, like a, a group of people is safer than just one. Police say the suspects were in a stolen four-door Mercedes with a Tennessee license plate 864-BGSC. It wasn't really this bad during the fall. It just, I feel like it got worse just now this semester. The school keeps a daily crime log of all incidents within the past 60 days. And while the list mainly consists of thefts and vandalism, we found another robbery that happened just days ago. According to campus police, a woman was walking to her vehicle Saturday night when a man approached her, implying he had a gun and demanding she gives up her belongings. Police say he ran away when she screamed. She was not hurt either. Reporting from the University of Memphis, Kwame Tra Wilborn, WREG News Channel 3. And we do want to let you know we... Lucky, lucky, lucky. Man, I found this I found this um, website for Temple University, man, which is in the heart of Philly. I mean, this North Philly. The things these students go through on Temple campus is just fucking insane, man. Um... This guy created this to keep, because Temple wasn't doing a really good job of alerting the students to all the crime that's happening around them. So this guy, a student, he started his own website, his own, um, his own, um, not website, his like own. Alert, his, community alerts? Yeah, community alerts. Yo, um, you can make it in Temple, you can make it anywhere. Exactly, man. 
He says, um, students witnessed a group of five to seven teens break into a white Kia and flee in a black SUV on Page Street. If your vehicle is in the area, consider moving it. The vehicle belongs to a local woman, and this is the second time it has been broken into. Key boys uh, undefeated. Male GoPuff DoorDash driver told female Temple student to get in his car and let's go for a walk multiple times, then followed her and continued to ask for her info, number, name, and personal info. I know. That's a son, man, for sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My number? I'm not sharing that information. I gotta go home. Okay, it's uh, only Instagram. You'll get mine? Yeah, Instagram. Yeah. My what? Instagram. Uh, Instagram. Are you know Instagram? Instagram? No, I don't even have that Instagram. That sounds like an Arab. Yeah, that is. I'm not walking yeah, here. I'm going home. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My number? I'm. So he's harassing that girl, but that's that's normal. That's that's normal. Um, uh, normal. Um, I used to do that all the time. <laughs> Fuck that. Um, <laughs> if that's called harassment, man, I was a fucking. I, oh, yeah, I, I should have. That's ten years in prison for me. <laughs> yeah, man. Like I mean, that's normal. I just, like God damn. Um, video of man stealing Amazon packages. On the 200 block of Carlisle. Oh, shit. Uh, fuck. Uh, wrong shit. On his phone, Bluetooth, talking loudly, carrying groceries, carrying groceries, and just oh, there's some packages. I'll just have. To, I'll just take those. I mean, <laughs> and gone in three seconds. That type of um, criminal mind right there is it should be terrifying because it's not like he left the house with a plan to um, go steal that those packages. It's not like he's like on a package stealing mission. He's just walking down the street, talking on his cell phone, carrying a bag of groceries home. Oh, I'll take these. And it's nothing to him. It doesn't even register. They must not want him. They weren't waiting exactly. for the truck to get there to take him in. Exactly. You must not want it. And that's a that is the that is the um mentality. It's at least where I was from. Oh, you don't want that shit. You must don't want it. If you if you if you ain't got it nailed down or locked up, you must don't want it. Wrong shit. Uh, fuck. Uh, wrong shit. He's talking to his girlfriend. He's called a stupid ass bitch. Uh, yeah, man. It's just, this, you know, video showing Temple students' boyfriend being robbed in the area of Gratz and Cecil B. Moore. The incident occurred last night. It says, oh, there's a video. They must have took it down. Um, the guy said, hey, just wanted to let you know so people can be careful. Last night around 9 p.m., my boyfriend got robbed literally right side of, outside my house. A citizen notification went out but wanted to give you the story. As he put the door code into my house, he opened the door, and four guys approached him from behind pulling on his backpack. They tried to make it seem like they were armed, and he quickly realized they weren't, so he talked them down. He asked them to not bother us and offered whatever they wanted, trying to stall for someone to come by. He also said he saw a lot of our neighbors in their windows and no one did anything. <laughs> There's a video of one of our neighbors took. The police officer showed me, but I don't have it. In the end, they took his phone, AirPods, 
and like a couple other things he had in his bag. He said it was definitely high schoolers and they all ran off after. My boyfriend doesn't go here, but I live on Gratz and Cecil B. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, that's just typical. Like, that's that ain't even like a crime. Like, those kids don't even consider that a crime. They just run up on a white boy and take your shit. That's not even like a crime. That's just like, I don't know how to explain it, but that's not like nothing you're like, you ain't badass, you ain't nobody, you can't get no props for that. That's just, that's like going to a vending machine and like, I don't know, that's like stealing something out of a store or something. But I, this was I a, saw, a, t I saw a Twitter video of uh, somebody that was released from a, a prison in uh, like California on like probation and he mm. had two bodies they convict they convicted him or he pled to one and he was actually getting out it was uh, he's like he's lived in there for like 12 years getting out and he would actually say well i they don't even know about all the bodies i got and oh yeah there was one who was a gladder he doesn't count he's he he, he, he he's just that I was like dang <laughs> yeah this doesn't even you know nothing man um Brick thrown through car window and items stolen on Cecil stolen was a keyboard and a box of sorority crop t-shirts. Yeah, they're oh, I see that. these I see. kids. Yeah. Temples they're, they're, in West Philadelphia? North. North, north. Philly. Yeah. Um, a male Temple student was beaten up and robbed on campus by four males. <laughs> On Thursday night, the suspect stole a wallet and scooter. Temple University Police Department chased down the offenders and arrested all four. This incident also went unreported by the university. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, the university wouldn't want to share this stuff because it would lower enrollment. Yeah, but they're, yeah, I mean, the cat's out of the bag on them. Um, um, on Temple. Another reported incident of sexual assault of female Temple student at Willington and Burks. Temple University PD has arrested the man after a foot pursuit from 15th and Norris to Broad in Montgomery. And he is allegedly linked to multiple sexual assaults on campus. So, yeah, you got... <laughs> oh, that's bullshit. Um... Temple student vehicle stuff. This is all in the last few days. All these. Ah. Days. Um, Best dental school in the country, still, right? Yeah, still. Yeah, great, great school, man. Um, yeah. If you go there, you, that probably excites you, though. Why else would you go there? That campus, I don't know what it looks like. It can't be too great. Reported homicide at the medical campus. So there was a homicide on the medical campus the other day. Well, they got a free cadaver, then. Yeah, exactly, man. I mean, uh, can we call a school like that a great school? A school that has, like, it's just so violent the area? Yeah, and this is just what that one kid is catching. He's got it. He's got class. He's, he's, you know, he just, he just. The investigation is digging deeper into a promise made by Temple University's president to improve safety. In 2021, after the murder of a student near campus, the university's president pledged to beef up its campus police. That has not happened. As Matt Petrillo reports, Temple's campus safety staff has actually shrunk as students continue to worry about crime. 21-year-old Temple student Samuel Collington was shot and killed near campus in November 2021, but his senseless death that. is still fresh on the minds of many students. I'm a political science student. He was in my program. It was, yeah, it was very tragic. Days after Collington was killed, Temple University President Jason Wingard issued this letter to students, writing in part, over the next days and weeks, Temple University will increase our campus safety force by 50%. Tonight we're here to honor Sam's legacy. Wingard reiterated his pledge at a virtual safety forum the following month in December 2021. 
Now, community, you've heard me commit to increasing the number of our patrolling officers by 50%. I'm hopeful that this forum tonight will continue our progress of finding solutions. It's been more than a year since the promise to increase campus safety, but a CBS News Philadelphia investigation found that goal has still not been met. Data from Temple shows in December 2021, its campus safety force had 169 officers and staff. Today, it has 155. That's 14 fewer employees. Tom Klein is Sam Collington's family attorney. That, of course, is not only discouraging and disappointing, but it should be, to everyone involved, alarming. We approached Wingard about our findings Thursday. When can the university expect to see that? So this is the guy in charge of Temple, man. <laughs> Such a racist country, man. Like every time we go somewhere, the person in charge is a fucking sun person. Everywhere. And old Sam was assassinated while walking home after a night on the town at the bar by a sudden man that just walked past him, took one step past him, turned around and shot him in the back of the head. No, that's a different case. That kid, Sam was caught, Sam was robbed, and then he, he gave up the money and complied, and the 17-year-old son man who was out on bond for two prior <laughs> carjackings, uh, and uh, um, for two prior robberies and a carjacking, Took it, took the money, and still killed Sam. The kid mm -hmm. you're talking about that happened um, in 2022. That was um that was another that was yeah, yeah. And that was the political guy. He was like 25. Well, both of them were political. Both of them. Sam was a um criminal justice type major, and he was very he was part of the Democratic um he like young Democratic yeah um, young Democrats yeah young Democrats. And he was That's very enough, very. Yeah. Yeah, very woke and all that stuff. But it, it was several white kids that got killed around there in the last couple of years. You start, I think you just get the mixed up. <laughs> hey, I, 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 but the fact that everywhere we go, the leadership is blank is either impressive or suspicious. Yeah. I'll be Bill embarrassed, bro. I'll be like, damn, man, we fucking up another spot. <laughs> Shit, bro. <laughs> That yeah, would require is, shame. Yeah. What's up, y'all? What's up, I'm, man? Yeah, I'm at know? this point. Can you see, like, like, I got college age kids. I I would never send my kid to college no more. They either get raped or shot up or have their titties chopped off. And Indoctrinated. Yeah, man. Fuck that, bro. I'm done. Done. I'm going to have to learn yeah. how to plumb. Yeah, man. It's facts, man. They make it's, good money, plumbers. Hell yeah, bro. That's why I ain't bullshitting. I'd rather have a plumbing ass lesbian daughter than a fucking daughter named Bill or some shit like that with her titties bound. S Salute the Deluxe 247, aka the real MVP, aka Cal Ripken, coming through once again. And salute the Christy Webster, aka Michael Babe Ruth Jordan, aka the GOAT, coming through once again like she do with three stacks, man. Salute to you. Um Christy Webster, man. That increase in staff for campus safety. So we have, go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, again, the issue is, is, is this, this isn't just a Temple issue. The issue is nationwide. Temple's campus safety director. <laughs> so that's just safety. This is the president of the university. Oh and my this God. is the safety. He's <laughs> in charge hey, of safety. The white liberal. I think I saw this show before when the fucking robber meets the victim. Is that it? This shit is insane. She's the safety director. Are you fucking kidding me? I wonder if this I would, will... like her. I would like to see her credentials on that. Her credentials is that she's a fucking woman and she got a thousand degrees. That's her you fucking know. credentials. You ain't bullshit, not. You ain't bullshit, not. You, you can already tell. See, she, she ruins every fucking holiday explaining things to people. And it's... I just want her. I want all these white people to die. <laughs> like, yeah, she's she's definitely one of those people that everything you said, she corrects you. You know, yeah, she she did a good job of answering the question by completely diverting to some <laughs> national thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm saying, what does she know about security? What does she know about crime? Anything about how to actually keep see people safe? Nothing. She knows she's she's, she's she's a criminal justice yet. major. Yeah. She knows who's doing it. Mm -hmm. She knows that <laughs> they just need hugs in a book. It's the guns doing it. Yep, that's yeah, that's it. 
I mean, this I, is terrifying. She, I, she'll explain racism to you over over dinner. Oh yeah, definitely. I actually know another glider queen that said some shit like that. Like we gotta love sun people more. That's why they're acting like this. Yeah, I mean, you can't love us anymore because he's the fucking president, man. Jennifer Griffin interjected, saying there is no timeline involving Wingard's pledge. Is it a realistic goal? Increasing by 50%. I think it's a lofty goal in this environment that we're working in right now. Griffin started the job in August, months after the pledge had been made. She says these days people would rather work from home or do other types of service jobs than be faced with the public scrutiny that now comes with wearing a badge. We're doing our best to continue to bring in the best people to do this job. Is the number of officers you currently have on your staff enough? We are handling calls for service right now. We haven't seen a delay in our calls for service. Is it enough to help us to be able to do different programs and strategies? We would love to have more to continue to expand. Temple's police union Look tells us without answer, more yeah. officers, it'll That's continue being a no big ever. challenge trying to curb the violence near campus. And many students we talk to agree. Looking at those numbers, it is it is a little worrying. I think more police officers would be beneficial just so the presence is known for the entire community. Temple has eight officers who are expected to grab. <laughs> fucking guy, man. I I am <laughs> unhappy with the news reporter because the news reporter didn't ask him tough question. No, you're evading the question. Do you have? enough officers well, i mean when you have they ever officers when have they ever actually done their fucking job true i know i'm well, mad that you respect them to ask a hard question to a semester they shouldn't be hurting for funds she out here looking like roger stone with a fucking wig on yeah, she's an ugly woman that is not a good looking woman this this Ooh. this son this uniform sun man is ready to take on a horde of <laughs> sun teens. He looks like bad he already. To, he about to take on diabetes, He'll lose a foot. It's crazy man. I mean, if I was yeah, if I I, I talked my my buddy out of sending his son to temple, and I, I I'm, at least I'm happy about that. He, oh, the one that was in the video with you, right? The one um yeah yeah. I remember oh, that was a good video. Stuff. Yeah, he, he his son ended up going to another university. Yo, but, tell him hit the link, Chief. Oh no, 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 no. You already know what he's gonna like. I, I've given you like he, ten videos on him. You know he, he's he, he still he's still doing that to this day, huh? Yeah, but you 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 nothing changes, man. What what, what are you talking about? Nothing changes. There's no, there's, yo. Well, you, it, it feels like either George Ford either pushed you one way or the other. You know, heavily. You know what I mean? Either no, he it makes you like realize that. the shit no. show, or it makes well, you... he, he's one of those people where George Floyd had no effect. Like you understand, mm -hmm. man. George Floyd didn't change everybody. People were already like that, man. Some a lot of ninety percent of those some people already like that. He just like exacerbated that shit, and they were already like that. Graduate from the police academy next month. But even with those recruits, campus safety still has fewer officers and staff than it did when Wingard committed to beefing it up by 50%. In North Philly, Matt Petrillo, CBS News, Philadelphia. The investigation is. So, yeah, man, um, they're going through hell on the campus at Temple University, man. Salute the Mayo, man. Mayo Month. Happy birthday, man. Salute the Mayo, man. It's um, Mayo's birthday. Happy birthday. Well, yesterday, Mayo. yesterday was my birthday. Happy birthday, I yeah, thank you, man. Um, yeah, but uh, this is this is. Uh, let's go back to um. Let's see, there, there's some other stuff happening on some universities recently. Let's see this one. Um, All new tonight, police are working to find out who attacked a Kennesaw State student outside his off-campus apartment over the weekend. Now, the student who was black says that two white men rushed him, beat him, and called him racial slurs. And just hours ago, he spoke with the Eleven Alive John Sherrick, who joins us live. I'm thinking bullshit. In Kennesaw. Yeah, but whether the, let's just say this is just a beating, right? He just got his ass kicked, right? The race of the person, is the, the perpetrators, the alleged perpetrators are, are, are mentioned. In none of those stories where all those Temple students went through all that shit was any time 
a race mention of any fucking perpetrator. And we know they were all black. Hours ago, he spoke with the Eleven Alive's John Sherrick, who joins us live at his apartment complex in Kennesaw. John. What the student went through was frightening, possibly life-threatening, here at his apartment complex in Kennesaw late Saturday night. And police are still trying to figure out what led up to it all and who attacked him. Security camera video from late Saturday night shows the confrontation outside Jalik Roseman's apartment when he says two young white men he'd never seen before jumped him as he was coming home from work. They were hit. Jalik Roseman. Two young, you think these were on burritos or white guys? I don't know, but this dude looked like a fucking bitch. <laughs> I'd be ashamed if my son was out here with a little mask on, talking about two white dudes beat me up and call me names. Like, shut the fuck <laughs> up, dog. I think he might have been on burritos, man. Two young white men he'd never I hope seen white before dudes. jumped him as he was coming home from work. They were hitting me, they stomped on me, they pulled, and then they refer, as they're beating me, they're referring to, they're referring to me as black boy, uh, they're a uh, boy, they, they were just uh, constantly saying racial slurs as they're- uh, Gladys. Roseman says they also kicked him in the face, broke his nose, and uh -huh. then one told the other to tear out his dreads. Uh -huh. Roseman got away, banged on his window, calling to his roommate for help. He was bleeding and his nose was fractured. Emmanuel Osakwe and Jalik Roseman say allegations that it all started because Roseman had tried to drive into one of the white men with his car and had a gun are just not true. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Us gliders are known for just attacking black people in the street because we don't lose everything for that. Thanks. Yeah, like, so, th I mean, so he's the only one saying his side of the story. But, um, this makes more sense, though. Manuel Osakwe and Jalik Roseman say allegations that it all started because Roseman had tried to drive into one of the white men with his car and had a gun are just not true. He has no doubt what started it. Just pure, pure discrimination and hatred because of the uh, color out and uh, because of my color and my race. It wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yo. I'm telling you, this is bad for this is bad bad for Sun Men, because it gives them an automatic out. They, you're not gonna go 100 percent hard because you can always blame a fucking glider for your failures. Yeah, they've been doing that though, Razzle. I, yeah. I know, but look how it's turned out for cats. It's like, yeah, you can the job, but you still a fucking lame. Yeah, man. Damn, man. Wow. Like, bro came to school, got beat up, and then, ugh, was, I've never been treated like this, man. It's because of the color of my skin, man. Shut I mean, up. It, 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 I, I'm start, I believe this story that there was a prior confrontation. Because white dudes ain't just coming in, especially in an apartment complex like that, just kicking no black dude's ass. Because everybody will jump in. Mm -mm. I, you'll get jumped if you're a white guy just kicking a black dude's ass, man. What about the gun part? Do you believe that part? That he had a gun? I believe I believe that I believe that there was a prior confrontation. I don't believe I don't believe it was over the color of his skin. I don't think he had a gun because I, I think can, I think he would have blew it. I think he would have shot it. Oh, he he would have shot it. I can yeah, believe yeah. it's a road rage incident. I can believe it's a road rage incident where he yelled at him, them and got at them and started going after them, and they said, "Oh, we'll take it out on you." Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I find think, over a parking spot, yeah. probably. Yeah, it was, yeah. It, was, it, was a, it was a prior incident. It wasn't. It just had nothing to do with skin color, man. I'm willing to bet. I did not provoke nobody. I'm betting I the, the racial nobody. slurs are all a lie. Home, just trying to get into my my house. And as Kennesaw police continue to investigate, they're not yet ready to classify this as a hate crime. But they're asking anyone who might have seen any of this or might know who attacked the young man to call the Kennesaw Police Department. Reporting live from Kennesaw, John Shearick, 11 Alive News. It's becoming unbelievable. That's what some Temple students are saying about crime. In oh, man. Unbelievable. Pittsburgh is, the, Pittsburgh is like Memphis, man. I ain't even gonna lie to you, man. Pittsburgh is, 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 is Memphis ain't got shit on Pittsburgh. Salute to, um, Salute to um, Eric S, man, with the cash app, man. Salute to you, bro. Um, 
Yeah, Pittsburgh is Pittsburgh is is, is fucking. Who? Um. Let's see. Tomorrow, students at Westinghouse Academy in Pittsburgh will be learning remotely that move coming after four students were shot outside the school today. And right now, police are looking for whoever opened fire. The victims are three boys and one girl. They're all expected to be okay. Jennifer Barresso is live at the school now with surveillance. Context clues. Four people shot. Everyone expected to be okay. I'm thinking funny. Video. You'll yeah, see only on KBKA. Shooting. Jen. That's right, Ken. Well, watching the surveillance video, you could hear nearly a dozen gunshots. Then the chaos unfolding. You could hear staff yelling and students running after Pittsburgh police say three 15-year-olds and a 17-year-old were shot. A dozen shots horrific. only hit four. That's a 33% average. That's pretty good for the sun community. Wounds. Katie KF yelling and students running after Pittsburgh police say three 15-year-olds and a 17-year-old were shot. It was horrific. It was tragic. Thank God everybody had not life-threatening wounds. KDK obtained this exclusive surveillance video of gunfire erupting outside of Westinghouse Academy in Pittsburgh's Homewood. You see school buses roll away and students running. A nearby resident who didn't want to be identified described the chaotic scene. It was so loud and it was just that rapid fire. And then I jump up and I look out the door and all I see is all the school buses scattering and kids running everywhere. What were you thinking? I, I just went into shock. School just let out when bullets went flying, hitting four Westinghouse Academy students, three teenage boys and one girl, with non-life-threatening injuries to their hands and other extremities, according to Zone 5 Pittsburgh Police. Three students taken to the hospital by ambulance, a fourth student driven to the hospital by a family member. All the students are stable, no life-threatening conditions. All the students are accounted for. And at this time, there's a diligent investigation to uh, determine the shooters. Sources tell me a witness told police they saw two men in ski masks on foot. They also say earlier in the day, there was a fight inside the school between two students. Those students reportedly got sent home and suspended after dismissal. Uh-oh. So the students got suspended, sent home. Never. Shooting up the place? Ever. No, this is a fight earlier. Oh. Before the, before the shooting, there was a fight in Two students got kicked out of school. Well, yeah. Went that way he had plenty of time to plan his ambush. Mm-hmm. Well, that's when the gunfire erupted. We don't know if the two events are related. It's too early to tell if this was targeted or random, but we too, do take the uh, safety of our students very seriously, and we will have extra officer presence over the next uh, couple of weeks here. And Pittsburgh police say at this point, no arrests have been made. Reporting live, Jennifer Barrasso, KDK News. Jen, thank. Do you guys want to know the demographics of this school? It's bad, yes. man. <laughs> On uh, is... great schools, it's 94% sun. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's 4% two or more races and 1% Hispanic or white. So it's 98% sun. Because those two more <laughs> races, those, those biracial kids identify as black. I promise you that. It, dude, and it gets worse. Only 67% of students graduate. How many? 67%. Well, that's pretty that's good. higher than I thought it was going to yeah, be. That's good. Man. That's high. Well, like, the, state, the, the state average for Pennsylvania is 86. Yeah, but like for a sun community like that, Detroit's less than 50%. So they're like yeah. Harvard. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like 57 is, is a huge number, man. Um, KDK following breaking news, a shooting outside Westinghouse Academy in Homewood. Police say four students were shot at dismissal time, three boys, one girl. All of them are expected to be okay. Police, as we speak, are still coming through evidence, trying to find any clues that would lead to possible suspects. Yeah, Katie Kay's Royce Jones is live at the scene right now with reaction from folks who live near that school. Royce. Yeah, people who live near the school tell me that when they heard the shots go off in this direction, they were pr 
praying that no kids were harmed in this situation. I spoke with several of them. He's got a dress actually, on underneath uh, that jacket. Home at the time of the shooting, some of them just sitting on their front porch, enjoying the weather, watching the day go by when these shots ring out. They say first they heard the shots and then quickly saw this block fill up with police. Nobody that I spoke with has any clue how any of this started, but they do know that they want this violence to stop. I was like, oh, not again, not again. Lord, please don't let anybody die. And I her first thought was, oh, Lord, not again. So there's obviously a lot of shootings around here, man. If you if you believe her. Wow. I believe her. Again, Lord, please don't let anybody die. And I, I just pray that we can unify better, not take things personally to a point where we're ready to take a life. It's a unity problem, guys. Uh, these black people, they need to unify better, man. That'll solve it. 98%, that's pretty fucking united, ain't it? Right. This is fucking insane, man. These people are fucking, I mean, golly, Pittsburgh. Yeah, because we're all in this together. And then a few people also mentioned to me out here today that there have been uh, fights here in this area in recent weeks outside of the school. Uh, they say some of them involving uh, young kids. So they're really hoping that this incident here today isn't any sort of retaliation uh, from that. They did mention there was just one uh, here down the block, a couple blocks from where we're standing on Sunday. So reporting live outside Westinghouse, I'm Royce Jones, KDKA News. Yeah, so this Westinghouse thing, I think it's like a K through 12. And compared to Baltimore, you know, it's doing pretty good. The three through like eighth grades, they're 9% uh, of the students are reading at grade level. Up to ninth grade, that's good. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, this is this is like a fucking private school, bro. This is like an academy. 